So I'm going to start off with the sponsors. And then we'll get uh, learning. How's that? How's your mother in law doing? She does a little better. She's home from the hospital and Gems. we're we're with her now. That's great. That's great. Okay. How long are you planning to stay? Probably till the end of the month. That's nice. Uh-huh. Okay. The year of learning. Sue and Aaron, Arnie Garlick, in memory of Malka Perman and Philip Mann. In a memory of family murdered in the Holocaust. Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Beth Ephraim, Yisrael David Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia Bas Arav Tzvi Hirsh, Miriam Bas Arav Tzvi Hirsh, Pesel Bas Arav Tzvi Hirsh, Shalom Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsh, Yisrael David Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsh, Beryl Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsh, Yosef Meir Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsh, Henya Rivka Perel Razna Basarav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Yaakov Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Shmuel Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch. Shall share her children and grandchildren in memory of her uncle, founding member of BRS, Dr. Israel Brook, Yisrael Ben Arav Akiva. Marsha Fedebush and family in memory of her husband, Dr. Ariel Paul Fedebush, Oriel Pinchas Ben Arav Shimon. Sharon and Fred Lisker, their family and many friends. In memory of her dear mom, Harriet Friedman, Edward Basiaco, Leslie and Gail Kaplan, in memory of their parents, Harry and Marjorie Sedale, Irving and Pearl Kaplan, friends of Avi Gidler, Lava Mayor Ben Shimon, and Martha Gidler, China Bas Yeshaya, friends of Toby Paris, Sarah Tova, Bad Yisrael Dov, friends of Malka Levy, Malka Bad Yosef, friends of Joe Wolf, Yosef Ben Chaim, many friends of Dr. Marvin Blush. Moshe Sholem ben Yitzchak Halevi, a month of learning by Haran and Mel Haller in memory of her father. Yosef Eliezer ben Svi Hirsch, B. Pizer in memory of her father, Yitzchak Dov ben Shmuel, Mordechai and Miriam Burr in memory of his mother, Manya Basarab Shimon Halevi, Stanley Presser in memory of his wife, Chayalea ben Zev Cohen, Judy and Michael Peretsky, a week of learning in memory of her mother, Rezel Bas Yehuda Leib. Uh, today is the, uh, what is it, the uh, 11th, 13th, right, 13th, 11th, 11th. Yeah, last time, there's no individual days, so many shamas have an aliyah, Craig Rafia, Velkin, Shemitah, Wetzelia, Koban, Israel, Good Convention. Amen, good morning, welcome back, good Rabbi morning. Green. Good, good morning, back. good morning, welcome back, Rabbi Green. Welcome, good morning. Okay, quick drink and then we're getting underway. Okay. It's... Okay. I'd like to suggest that we start on the bottom of uh, 29B. Okay. Uh, if you look carefully, it's about uh, three lines up from the bottom. Zehaklal Hayab Mikdash. Okay. Remember that the Gemara is, is, is discussing the whole issue of washing, Ooh. which is going to continue to be a, an important uh, concern, particularly for the Yom Kippur observance, right? Because the Kohen Gadol had to wash a certain number of times hands and feet and immerse in a mikvah a certain number of times. So up to that point, we had a Mishnah previously that said uh, other people were not able to enter the temple, the, the base of Mikdash area, okay? And then the question of washing. So the Gemara there tells us, Zahaklau Hayab Mikdash, Bishlema Raglayim, says the Gemara. Certainly that's understandable for- Could you repeat where we are? I'm sorry. Yes, sure. Okay, it's, I am, it's basically Kaf, Tet, Amud Beis, three lines from the bottom. I don't have art scroll here, so I can't tell you which uh, page it's on there. 29B2. 29B2, thank you. Okay. So the Gemara says, Bishlam Mishum Nitzatzot. 
Okay, Eliadayim question mark, right? So in other words, it's clear that uh, why does one have to wash before coming into the whole temple precinct? Because if they urinate, it's possible that their drops went on their legs or on their garment and one could have brushed them off. So clearly, wash off feet, that would be a valid reason. But why washing off hands? That's the question that the Gemara is asking. My Tama, what's the reasoning? Amar Rabbi Abba, Zoto Meret, says the Gemara. It comes to tell us what? Mitzvah the Shaf Shef. That it is a mitzvah to remove, to brush off the drops of urine from one's legs, right? So they shouldn't be seen. Messiah Leila Rabbi Ami. And this seems a support to the view of Rabbi Ami. The Amar Rabbi Ami Asur la Adam Shayet Sei Benutzotzot Shal Gabe Raglayim. Mepne Shinir E Kikikrot Shafcha. Umotzi Laaz Albanav Shehem Mamzeri. Okay. What's the reasoning that Rabbi Ahmed gives? Okay, because if a person goes around with drops of urine on his legs, the implication might be that people would think that he had a severed male organ. And if he had a severed male organ, he would not be uh, able to produce progeny. And therefore the question would be, are the progeny that claim to be his truly mamzerim? And so that's the issue that Rabbi Ami suggests. Now, following that, <coughs> so we get into a slightly another issue about uh, removal of, uh, of uh, situations from one's body. Amar Rav Papa, Soa Bim Koma. Let's assume, what about, since we discussed the issue of the urination, what about excrement? Okay. What does a person do in that situation? May they enter the Besa Mikdash area, okay, or not? Okay. So Rav Papa is saying, is from it, Soa Bim Koma, Asur Likrot Kriyachma. If somebody has excrement still in his uh, anus, okay, we are saying that it's forbidden for him to recite the Shema until he removes it. Hechi dami, how is that possible? Asks the Gemara. E dinir eight pshita. If it's so visible. really visible, okay, then uh, it should be uh, obvious that he shouldn't recite Kriyat Shema, okay? He delonerate, and if it's not visible, in other words, it's still really inside the body, lo nit nat Torah the Malachi Hasharit. The Torah wasn't given to angels. We're human beings, right? We have this situation. Gemara says, lo tricha, okay? No, he says, uh, that may be the case, but it's still necessary to prohibit recitation of Kriyat Shema. Why? The Yoshev, the near eight. Because were he to sit, okay, it's possible that it would be visible. Okay? Omed, the Eina near eight. If he's standing, then it's not visible. Okay? And since it's permissible to recite the Shema seated, that is the implication. Uh, ra rabbi, Private parts by nature are, are, are not visible. Why would we uh, give, uh, we, you know, we know we can't even daven with our, our private parts. We're not supposed to, right. We're not supposed to. That doesn't mean that somebody is, let's say, totally clean, right? Right, okay. That, that would be the explanation. As I could tell you the other day when I, was walking and uh, saw a father helping his uh, toddler to dispose of some issues there, outdoors. Okay. He was, he was okay. Uh, providing for fertilizer, 
אוקיי? ומה ישנה במוצאה של בשרו? So the Gemara says, so what's the difference if the excrement is on his skin? Okay, why is this, uh, okay, such a significant issue? De'itmar, because it was said, so a'al b'saro, ho shahaya yadav b'veit ha'kisei, rav huna amar, mutar likrot kriyat shma, rav chista amar, asur likrot kriyat shma. So a machloket between Rav Huna and Rav Chista, indicating, okay, if uh, he still had, let's say, uh, uh, some excrement on his body, all right, or his hands uh, in uh, a situation where his hands were still in the outhouse or something, okay, it's forbidden to recite Shema, okay? But the Gemara says, Bim Koma. Okay, we're talking about the question of if the excrement is in its normal place, remaining there. Nafesh Zohama. Okay, then uh, the filth is known where it is. Shalom Bim Koma, but when it's not in its appropriate place, in other words, if it's not still retained inside the body. Lo nafesh zohama, then its filth is not so great. You'll remember, by the way, uh, in other words, that the dried excrement, okay, was utilized in their day, okay, for various purposes, okay? So, Tanu Rabbanan says the bright, right, as we continue. Halacha b'su'uda. Okay, a new topic, right? What about uh, laws regarding meals, right? Adam Yotzei Lahashtin Mayim. Since we're already brought up the topic of, uh, of uh, urination, excrement, etc. So the Gemara asks, let's assume that one has to, uh, in the middle of a meal, excuse himself and go, Okay, valid question. Would one have to come back and wash and bench? And, okay, a bench before, you know, before they leave? Or does, what, what's the, what does the discussion? So the Gemara says, Adam yotzei v'hashtin mayim, notel yado achat v'nechnas. Okay, he washes one of his hands. Okay, he goes to brush off after he's done. Right? Okay. Dibayar im chavero v'hiflig. Okay? If he left and then was hanging out at the men's room, so to speak, talking and discussing what happens to whatever, no tel shte yadav v'nechnas. Then he has to wash both his hands and then can come in. Ukeshehu no tel. And when he washes his hands, lo yitol mi bachutz v'yikanes. All right, that he washes his hands, he should not wash them simply on the outside and then enter, All right? All right, what happens? <coughs> because there's some suspicion there. <coughs> but rather he washes outside comes in, washes again, okay, so that he doesn't arouse suspicion, okay, about washing, sits in his place, he washes, okay, and then he can pass around the water jug, okay, for others, okay, to continue if they need to wash. Okay, we come to a new mission, right? Since we were raising this subject, we're now specifically dealing with washing and uh, hands and feet, or well as mikvah immersion. Okay, and so the Mishnah says, "Ein adam nichnas la azara la avoda, afilu tahor." A person does not enter the temple precinct, right, the courtyard. 
for the purpose of participating in the worship, even if they are considered to be tahor, ad sheyitpol chamesh tefilot va'asara kiddushin, okay, until they wash, right? So in other words, they would immerse in a mikvah first, and then enter the temple precinct. That's an average person. Now the Mishnah continues. What about the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur? Chamesh Tfilot va'asara kiddushin tovel Kohen Gadol u'mekadesh bo bayom. There are five inversions. So in other words, five occasions, says the Mishnah, that the Kohen Gadol totally immerses himself. And in addition to that, there are 10 occasions where he washes his hands and his feet. Okay, now, okay. And then he may proceed with the uh, rest of the service. The Chulan Bakodesh Albeit Haparva. And all of these are done, says the Mishnah, in a sanctified place. Remember, we said that there is on top of the Beit Haparva, that was one of the rooms, there was a mikvah right on the, let's say, on the second floor. Okay. Okay. With the exception of the very first immersion that he does. And what do they do? Okay, there are those who attend the Kohen Gadol. Parsu Sadim shall boots beino levein ha'am. Okay, and they spread a uh, linen sheet, let's call it for the moment, between him and anyone who, uh, who might be able to observe. Okay, a fine linen sheet. All right. And so that allows him to kideshya davraglav, right? And that also he immerses, and then afterwards he washes his hands and feet. Okay. Now, a couple of questions as we're going to start the Gemara in a moment. If he immersed his whole body in the mikvah, why should he have to wash his hands and feet again afterwards? Shouldn't the immersion in the mikvah be satisfactory, right? Second question we might ask, okay? At what point would he have to do these immersions in the mikvah? We know already from what we've studied so far that the Kohen Gadol has to change garments frequently on Yom Kippur. Sometimes he wears golden garments. Sometimes he puts on regular linen garments. Does he have to immerse in between each change of clothing? Okay. And does he do that once or does he do that twice? For example, if he starts off wearing the golden garments, okay, and then he has to immerse to put on the linen garments to go inside the Kodesh Kedoshim. And then he comes out from the Kodesh Kedoshim and has to switch back, right? So from the linen garments to the golden garments, does he need to immerse again? So those are the kinds of issues that we're going to start seeing as the Gemara continues over the next couple of uh, dapping. Okay? So the Gemara starts off. Sha'alu at Ben Zoma. So they asked Ben Zoma, Tfila Zo Lama, this very first immersion that the Kohen Gadol does. Okay? Or for a person, we said at the beginning of the Mishnah, any normal person to come in, why do they have to do it? Amar Lahem. So Rav, right? Ben Zoma answers, Umar HaMishane Mi Kodesh Kodesh. He tells them the same way a person might move from one service to another service. Okay? So that we see, for example, clearly with the Kohen Gadol. Okay? He has a number of different things that he's performing. Right? 
So the same thing should apply for moving from one area to another area, okay? One uh, sacred area to another uh, sacred area, all right? That's what he's saying. Ta'un that requires immersion. Hamishane michol Kodesh, one who's then transitioning from an unconsecrated area to a consecrated area, right? And that's punishable by karet, right? The makom she'anush karet, okay? If you don't follow the proper procedure, eno din she'ta'un tefila. Is it not logical, says the Gemara, right, that one should, okay, therefore be required to immerse? Now, that was Ben Zoma's answer. Rav Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda is going to give a slightly different answer. His, his suggestion is that this very first immersion, particularly on the part of the Kohen Gadol, was sort of more preparatory than actual uh, part of the avoda on Yom Kippur. Okay. Now, Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Serech Hatvilahi Zo, that this is a, as I said, a preparatory kind of uh, immersion. It's not a mitzvah. Kadeshi is called Tumayishana. So that he might remember, were he to have a earlier uh, situation of tuma, okay, he would now be cleansed from it, right? Kadeshi is called to Maishana Shabiado Vifrosh. Okay, were he to remember then any old impurity and uh, be separated from it. Bamai cometh again. So the Gemara asks, so what's then the argument between Ben Zoma, who says that uh, this is a required, this first immersion is required because the Kohen Gadol may have you have, uh, or somebody may have immersed when they were outside the, the Azara before coming in, okay? So what are they arguing about? Let's see. Okay, come if again. The Gemara is suggesting here that it's in regards to the fact that there might be a reason, Benzoma would say, that the Avoda would become uh, deconsecrated. The Ben the Benzoma, Mikhail Avoda. For Benzoma, Okay, with a, a, an immersion without the purpose of becoming kadosh, becoming more sanctified, would render the avoda null and void. The Rabbi Yehuda, lo mechel avoda. For Rabbi Yehuda, it would not do the same. So the Gemara asks, really, will the ven zoma mi mechel? According to ben zoma, you say the avoda would become deconsecrated? Vahatanya, but aren't we taught elsewhere in a Brayta? Kohen Gadol Shalo Tavao Velo Kidesh Bain Beged La Beged Ubain Avoda La Avoda. Okay, that the Kohen Gadol, okay, who didn't immerse himself, okay, or didn't wash his hands between changing garments. And remember, we're talking about from the gold garments to the white linen garments, right? Or even, okay, in that case, right, what about it, right? Or between one act of worship and another act of worship, right? Avada Tauksheira, says the Brighter. His avoda is valid. Echad Kohen Gadol, the Echad Kohen Gadyat. The same applies to the Kohen Gadol and to a common Kohen. That if he did not wash, whether it's the Kohen Gadol or a common Kohen, at least his hands and his feet before he did the morning service, the morning, right? The Korban Tamid in the morning, 
right? Avodat Torah. Then his worship would be disqualified. In practical question, what's the significance of whether or not the service is valid or not, and who would know, and what would it make a difference? Remember, the korban tamid was a korban that was done for atonement for the entire community. Yes, okay. but, but, but so any, if it was invalid, would anybody be aware that it wasn't valid, that he didn't wash his hands? And it, it could be that there were other kohanim there as well. Remember, he, he would maybe not do the entire ceremony in one kohen, because we like to say that there were the more kohanim, so to speak, involved, the better. Earlier, we learned that there were about 13 kohanim involved in the morning preparations, all connected with the avoda. One had so to be were not, brought, So that if it were yeah. not valid, would it be repeated by somebody else? That's a, they would have to do it all over again, right? Okay. Especially if it's a communal offering as well. Okay. So what happens? So the Gemara is now saying, well, perhaps that isn't what their argument is about. Maybe their argument is about whether it's really a commandment, a positive commandment to uh, do this first initial immersion. The Ben Zoma Kaiba say, Ben Zoma claims that, okay, that it is a positive Right? And therefore, if he doesn't do it, he's over on a positive commandment. The Rabbi Yehuda, lo kaiba say. And Rabbi Yehuda would say, no, he's not transgressing a positive commandment. So the Gemara asks again now, the Rabbi Yehuda high svara? And does Rabbi Yehuda really hold that opinion? Vahatanya, but aren't we taught elsewhere in a bright Mitzorah tovel v'omeid b'shar nikanor. That somebody who was a leper, so to speak, what we would call, you know, struck with as a mitzorah, he would have to, as part of his purification, remember, immerse. He would have to bring his korbanot. Okay, at a certain point then, he would have to get sprinkled with water of purification on his ear and his right thumb and his right big toe, okay? And he was waiting there, okay, on the steps to the gate of Nicanor. Rabbi Yehuda Omer says, He already, remember, as a Mitzorah, had to already have done a tefillah as part of his purification. So why do you say, that he has to immerse another time before coming, so to speak, into the temple precinct. Okay. How who could the Tani Tama, says the Gemara. Okay. Here, it's as if they've given the reason, okay, that was taught in the Brahita. Shekvar Kaval Bami Ba'erev, that he already immersed the previous evening. So the Gemara now responds in an interesting manner. It says, Ude ka'are la, mai ka'are la. Okay, and if we accept this braita, okay, as a, a challenge to Rabbi Yehuda's opinion, okay, how do we understand it, so to speak? Right? What is it? Mishum de kabai la mirma akarite ale. Right? because the Gemara wants to use this to bring a discussion, perhaps on another issue, on another contradiction, right? Namely the following. The Midishkat HaMetzorayin, Shesham Metzorayin Tovli. We called one of the chambers, remember, the chamber of the lepers, the Metzorayin, because we claim that they immersed there. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, lo metzorein bilvad amru, ele kol adam. According to Rabbi Yehuda, okay, they say that no other people used to immerse there as well. Lo kasha. No, that's not right. 
Okay, no, that's not a difficulty, says the Gemara. Had to have you, had to lot of you. In one case, we might say that the Mitzora immersed the evening before. In the other case, maybe he said, uh, no, he didn't immerse. Ha'arev shemesh No, he still needs to wait till nightfall. Hela idi ve'idi tavir. But in both cases, we might say that the person immersed had the asach da'ate, had the lo asach da'ate. In one case, yeah. right, attention. what happened, he, uh, he was distracted. He didn't pay attention, okay? And therefore, he's not yotze in his tefillah, tevila, I'm sorry. And in the other case, he, right, he, one case he paid attention. In the other case, he didn't pay attention and therefore wouldn't be yotze. So the Gemara says now, he asachdate. Right, if he was distracted, okay, hazaat shlishi ushvi bai. If that's the case, okay, then what about what about the fact that on the third and the seventh day, okay, doesn't he require then? Uh, didn't he require being sprinkling on those occasions, right? And that, in other words, doesn't that help him at all? That on the during the seven days that he was waiting, third day he got sprinkled, seventh day he got sprinkled. Then only then afterwards does he go to Mikra. The Amar Rabbi Dustai Bar Martin, he said Amar Rabbi Yochanan in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Hasach Dat Tzrich Hazash Lishi Ushvi. That indeed. Okay, if somebody was distracted during their final, let's say, immersion at the end of the purification, that Mitsura did lead clearly to have required sprinkling on the third and seventh days. So therefore we come up with another possibility. Ela idi ve'idi, delo asach da'ate. So we must say in both cases, the Mitsura, the leper did not become distracted, and therefore it's not going to be a problem. Lokata ha de tavil al dat biat mikdash ha de lo tavil al dat biat mikdash. Why? Because one immersed in anticipation of coming to the base of mikdash, and the other did not immerse in, in terms of his impending arrival. To the base of Mikdash. The Ibayat Amor, if you want, I could say as follows. Tani, let's teach it. Lo Mitzorain, Amru Elekoladam. We weren't just talking about lepers, but we were talking about any person. Now, Ravina Amar, okay, wants to give a different explanation to this issue with Rav Yehuda, with Rabbi Yehuda. So he tells us as follows. Rabbi Yehuda the Divrehim, the Rabbanan Ka'amarlo. Namely, Rabbi Yehuda was saying his view, okay, vis a vis a statement of the Rabbana. Lididi, according to my view, Mitzora ain't so tevila. That the Mitzora doesn't even need that init, that uh, first, that immersion, because in a sense, he was sprinkled already third and seventh days. The deed but according to your view, rabbis, Oduli, you should acknowledge to me, easy mehat delo mitzoraim bilvadamru. Okay? That, uh, that the case must be that we're not only talking about uh, as somebody who's a mitzora, okay? But we're talking about any person, right? The Rabbanan and the rabbi say, Mitzura, the Yesh Betuma, Koladam, Lo de Yeshi Betuma. That with a Mitzura, okay, who is uh, accustomed, frequently involved with things that are impure, that person, they argue, must have that immersion 
as part of their purification. Whereas the average person, that's not the case. Now, Amar le Abai the Rav Yosef, he says as follows. Name the Rabbanan, the plege alay the Rabbi Yehuda. Shall we say then that those rabbis who disagree with Rabbi Yehuda, keben zoma sevirilo, that they really hold just like the same view as Ben Zoma did, right? Vahai de Katani Mitzorah, and the fact that they chose, let's say, the example of the Mitzorah, right? Why did they do that? Okay. Lahodiacha Kocho de Rabbi Yehuda. That was simply to show the view of Rabbi Yehuda, how far he said that the Mitzorah didn't need it. Odilma, or perhaps Shani Mitzorah. Maybe the Mitzorah's case is unique to Daesh Batuma, okay, because we suspect that he could easily be involved in some impurity. Amale, and they might say, Shani Mitzorah to Daesh Batuma, that the Mitzorah is unique in a sense that they do be require. Okay, since they are associated with impurity, that they certainly do require Jesus. that immersion. Now, Amarle Rabbi the Rav Yosef, and Rabbi says, the Rabbi Yehuda the Amar Serech Tmilahi, and as far as Rabbi Yehuda said, it was simply a preparatory situation. Right? What do we say? Is the case there, right? Chotzeitz or no chotzeitz? Do we say that the water on his body, okay, is a break, an interposition or not? Amarle called the takun rabbanan ke'ain de oraita takun. We say that the ordinances established by the sages, by the rabbis, are parallel to Torah law. Okay. And therefore, the water is not considered Okay. All right. Let's go on. We're on Amud Bet now. All right. Or no? Did we, we finish? Yeah, we finished Lamed Bet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're going to stop there. Okay. What's going to happen is the rest of the uh, Ahmed Bet, just, just Ahmed 31, the uh, Lamed Aleph is going to continue this discussion back and forth between the rabbis and Rabbi Yehuda. Okay. And then we're going to get into a, a little bit of geography about uh, how the water uh, arrived and how deep was the water and how deep a, a mikvah has to be. Okay, and then ultimately we'll get back to the situation of the Kohen Gadol, okay, and the order of the service and his, <coughs> excuse me, number of immersions. Okay. Very good. All right, everybody. Good to see you guys. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you, you too. Have a great Thank day. Everybody. Take care. Thank you. Have a good day.